Welcome to this session. Hello, everyone. My name is Mathilde Panes. I am the teaching coordinator uh, at EPFL Library. Um, and today we are uh, having our second coffee lecture. This one is about uh, research uh, equation and how to enhance it. So um, the objectives for today, there are two of them. Uh, the first one is to uh, know how to improve our research equation and also to get an overview of the tips to refine the scope of your research equation. This session is recorded, but uh, for the question part that will be at the end, uh, I will um, stop the, the recording. Um, so the kind of research or search I'm talking about today is a structured search. So something that you want to do a bit thoroughly uh, at the beginning of a project. Uh, maybe it can be for a literature review or just for you to, to be informed on the latest publication on, on the topic. And you might have the impression um, that you know a lot uh, in your field already, you have been working um, there for a while, but um, it's um, good to check that you didn't miss any publication. Um, so we advise you to start early in the project, um, so you have all reference uh, sources at your disposal, and we would like you to be strategic about it. So. Uh, what I mean by strategy is to follow some steps um, that I'm going to describe. And uh, before I start, I want to note that this, this uh, process is an iterative pro uh, process. You will uh, go back and redo some steps. Um, and I will uh, go back to that in a, in a minute. So the st first step is to check your research question. So it's the research question for your project in general, and you should have that already. Uh, it should be defined um, at the beginning of the project. And what I think is important uh, here is to um, do the second step. So extract the concept of your research equation uh, question. So from your research question, there will be several big topics. And for the information, that you gather to be relevant, it should include some, some general concepts uh, because if it's not the case, then the documentation is only useful to understand a part of, uh, of your topic. So extracting the concept, um, it, it, it will be like, yeah, the main topics of your research question. And then from the concepts, you will list all the keyboard, keywords. So at, at the beginning, the goal would be to, to have a lot of them, uh, to check the, their translations. Maybe if you are going to look uh, for information in a, a language that is not your native language, um, maybe abbreviations also. Uh, sometimes you use abbreviations already, sometimes you don't use them, but um, you, you will need them to, to find uh, the relevant document. And with that, we will build a um, research equation. We will see that in a minute. In, and the last step would be to learn and adapt. So it means that you will have to, to check uh, the results you get from the research equation to build another one or a slightly different one. So keywords, uh, of course, you can do a, a big brainstorming, write all the keywords that are related to the concept uh, that you extracted. But uh, some tips uh, that I can give you here is to, uh, if you find an article that you find relevant or um, in, in your field, you can check the keywords that were used to describe it. So sometimes, um, the authors, uh, if you already published, you know that you have to provide some keywords with your articles. Um, sometimes the database as well will provide uh, articles so people are um, employed to, to, to um, 
let's say index or give keywords to your to your uh, uh, paper so in a database or in, in a journal you will find some additional keywords that describe a topic similar to yours and that can be um, helpful and another way is also to think out of the box so maybe in your lab the same words are used to to talk about uh, um, uh, your research but in other labs maybe they don't have the same customs so they don't will they won't use the same abbreviation and it's good to to do that you can go to a rather complex um, way so for each concept you could have keywords and then for each keywords their synonyms their related terms and the alternate form which would be the abbreviation this is very thorough but um, you can aim for that uh, at the beginning at least okay so then those keywords to build an equation so this is the first uh, step of building an equation, you will mix them with Boolean operators. In the context of information retrieval, using Booleans will help you um, to tell the system or the database or the search engine that you want to have concepts together or not. So the three main Booleans, they are AND, OR, and NOT. AND uh, um, is to combine two key concepts. So it means that you are only interested in documents that have the two concepts. You want to have a document that is about French fries and ketchup, but you are not interested if it's only about French fries or only about ketchup. The second operator is OR. So here it means that you are interested in either of the keywords or the concepts to appear in the results. In that uh, case, Maybe you are interested in any paper uh, if they are talking about either mayo or ketchup, you are interested. And then uh, there is the maybe lesser used um, operator that is not, that is good to help uh, disambiguate or exclude some ideas. Um, and um, yes, so that would be the three main operators. Uh, and will narrow the number of results you get because it's more precise or will broaden the number of results you get and not will also narrow the number of results you get. I will go on uh, with uh, an example of a research equation. So here it's the theoretical example uh, where I have one concept, two concepts, three concepts. Um, the first one, it will be translated in various keywords. So uh, all of them are synonyms. So I can, um, I don't mind if I add a, have either synonym one, synonym two, or related term one, let's say. But I want to have this concept to appear and the second concept to appear in the form of, of synonym one and related term one. The same goes for concept three. Here, I only have one word to describe it, but I want it to appear. Uh, there are parentheses that are used to group the concepts and that will also give uh, indication to the system on what should be together. If I translate it to a somewhat re more real case, I could have here uh, one keyword with another and another, all separated by an OR, because I don't mind which it is, but I want one of them to appear. And another, uh, the end operator to link with another concept. And you can see here, I have added some um, other uh, indication in my equation that I will describe. Those are other tweaks that you can use to uh, write a research equation. So here, the minor tweaks are the following. Uh, the first one is the truncation with an asterisk. Uh, and it will um, help me have um, a search for the stem of the word and all of its endings. 
An example I have is with uh, interact. So if I have interact asterisk, the system will search for in interact, interaction, interactivity, um, and it will give me more possibilities, let's say, and I don't have to write them all. Wildcards can be used uh, here in the case of prosthesis. So there is prosthesis in singular and prosthesis with um, one with an eye, one with a knee uh, for plural. And here with the um, question mark, I could have uh, just a wild card say, telling the system that there is something there, but I don't specify what it is. Um, it's, it's useful also sometimes for uh, words that have a different spelling in American and British English. Another tip that you might be familiar with is the phrase searching, um, where you can use quotation marks to search for an expression in itself. So here, I want visual cortex to be together. I don't want visual and later cortex. I don't find it, find in, find it very interesting, but I want them to be grouped together. So this I can use um, and uh, the uh, I can use the quotation mark for the system to uh, look for this exactly. All right. So now the question here is, is it the equation of your dreams? Maybe yes, maybe not. Um, it's often hard to tell uh, that the equation is perfect. perfect. Some of them can be better than others. And you will be the judge of that because you have to test your equation in preferably several databases to see um, if uh, the results you get are good. So there is a, the question of uh, quantity. Maybe sometimes you have too many results, so that's noise. And it's too much information for you to read and to evaluate. Uh, and that would be a hint to narrow your search a bit to be able um, to, to yourself manually check the results. And silence is when a research equation is too precise and you don't have enough information, maybe because it doesn't exist or also maybe because there might be um, a mistake or the the research uh, in the publication you are looking for is described on a, a larger scale, so not, not so precisely. Um, but anyway, in between noise and silence, there is um, sometimes, or usually you will have a reasonable amount of, uh, of uh, results and you can check them. And you could read the titles and the abstract to see if it goes in the right direction. And that's usually at that stage that you will already um, start again, maybe change your equation a bit and do another iteration. What it means uh, is also that if you want to be a very structured, you can use uh, you, you should write things down. So here is a, an example of a, a very um, precise way to keep track of what you are doing and uh, naming the source, the date, uh, the equation you use, your observations, and maybe um, improving the search uh, at each stage. Uh, you can I, I, we advise you that you keep track uh, of equations that work for you, uh, at least because then you will be able to rerun the equation sometimes later, maybe at the end of the project, we want to check that uh, you didn't miss uh, anything that was published in the meantime. In the course of a PhD project, it can be useful to, to check sometimes in between as well. Uh, that's why also you could set up alerts, so main, uh, I won't go into details, but practically all databases has a, have a way for you to record um, your equation in the system and to get an update uh, periodically. So the equation is run for you again and again. 
All right. So this is what I wanted to say in 10 minutes. Uh, and we are at the end now. So um, I was a bit more talkative than I expected. Uh, even if I uh, check my time <laughs> uh, very often. Um, so here are my contact details. And uh, what I want to tell also is the next coffee lecture uh, will be next week at the same time. And it will be about unpay wall and how to find open access content easily.